Um, can you hear me, by the way? This call is now being recorded. <laughs> yes. Right. Um, so, um, first of all, hello once again. I'm Natya. Today we have a um, second seminar uh, with the topic of working with uh, LGSV on Python API. Uh, I hope you managed to read the document that we shared via mails and uh, try to follow the steps. Of course, uh, I'm sure that you may have a questions uh, or would like to clarify something. Um, and today you will have a chance to ask all these questions using chat or unmuting and asking directly uh, to our mentor. And lead of today's session will be Levan for today. But before Levan will start, I also would like to remind about uh, IEEE uh, challenge that if you are planning to apply for this challenge, um, there is a deadline to sign up the team till 15. So hurry up <laughs> if you are planning to apply. It's the right moment that you should do it now. OK, that's um, anyway, uh, you have all these links uh, either in Telegram or we, ha we are sharing the mails each time. And you can quite easily find it. And anyway, I will sh share it here as well later. And now I think Levan can start. <laughs> Thank you, Natia. So hello, everyone. Uh, Today we have a long session. Uh, so how did you do the prerequisites? So did you manage to uh, install the Python and IDE? You can either, I installed both. OK, great. Uh, did anyone have any problems? Or do we have anyone who uh, hasn't installed the prerequisites? So I said that two people did it successfully. What about others? Yeah, cool. Yeah, so as I remember from the Q&A session, uh, many of you were uh, beginners in Python or didn't know Python at all, or uh, some of you uh, knew some other languages, but not Python. So I will uh, try to keep it basic. And I will also go through some um, Python basics at the beginning. And then we can move to installing the API and uh, having some fun. <laughs> so is it necessary to use VS? I had PyCharm, but installed VS anyway. No, it is not necessary to use VS. Uh, you're free to use uh, any IDEs that you enjoy. But today I will be showing in VS Code. OK, so uh, yeah, I don't see this link that is going to be helpful. Mm -hmm. OK. Yeah, so Alexandre uh, shared the link with you, which is uh, a document of what we are going to cover today. You can see all the comments there also. If you will uh, like not be able to follow or you will have some problems, you can also uh, do it according to this document. I will also be following this one. So I guess we can start now. I will share my screen. So can you see my screen? Yes, quite well. OK, great. So uh, uh, I will go through it. And you can uh, ask some questions. Uh, and I will also ask if you are following. So it, it is good. It will be good if you follow it uh, together with me. Mm, if you uh, want to be able to follow, you can ask the questions in the chat. OK, so let's start first. Uh, you need to open Anaconda Navigator. Uh, if you successfully installed Anaconda, then uh, you should be able to find it in Windows. And we will use this Navigator to launch uh, Visual Studio Code. And it will also set up some environment to uh, use Python. So we will uh, launch VS Code from here. Mm -hmm. 
So I'm assuming that you are all following. Uh, and we can also uh, go here in the extensions. And I have already installed Python extension. Uh, if you don't have it, you can look it up and click install. I will like uninstall it and reinstall it. It takes like several seconds. And this will allow you to uh, see some errors if you have some errors in the code. And uh, yeah, it, it includes some helpful stuff when working with Python. Okay, uh, next um, we can create some folder. For example, I'll create a folder on desktop, uh, which will be our working folder. Uh, let's name it. Let's name it Hello World, for example, because uh, first we will do some Hello World to begin with Python. So if you like haven't used uh, any programming languages before, uh, the Hello World is like considered as the most basic program that people first learn in in a new language. Uh, so you can now create a new file. Uh, you can either click here to create a new file, or you can go to File, New File, and we will create our first uh, Python script. Let's name it Hello World. And Python has extension .py. .py. And now, uh, like VS Code correctly identified, it has a Python file. And also at the bottom, you can see that it found uh, our Python environment. So you can click in the check it that it is a correct one. For example, if you have two uh, Python installations, uh, it may find uh, the other one. So that's that's the correct one. Now, like writing Hello World is Python is like probably the easiest uh, in all languages. Uh, you just write print Hello World. Uh, so this is a function. Uh, we put functions in braces, function arguments. And here we have a Hello World string. Uh, and we, we put it in quotes. So any words, sentences, stuff like that, strings, uh, we put them in uh, braces. No, not braces, quotes. And you can also use double quotes. They are same in Python. So let's save it. And now we need to run it. So are you are you following? If you're following, write yes. Okay, perfect. Uh, yeah, cool. Uh, okay, now we will open terminal. Uh, you can do it from here. Terminal, new terminal. And this is uh, same terminal as uh, you would get if you opened like PowerShell or command prompt here, but it is like integrated in our VS code. So now, um, how we run Python. Python is an interpreted language, uh, which means that instead of uh, compiling our program and uh, converting it to machine language, uh, instead we have a piece of program called Python interpreter, which goes through your code and line by line it interprets it to machine language. So we need to call our program with this Python interpreter. You need to enter Python, and after that, name of your script, which is hello world. So it worked. It printed hello world. So our first kind of experiment is successful. Uh, now, a cool thing about Python is that uh, you can also run this interpreter 
uh, without specifying a program, without writing it uh, in advance. And you can like write uh, Python code in real time. So we will see that now. Can you increase font a bit? Uh, let's try. Yeah, I'm not really sure it's possible here. Uh, cursor width. I check font. Okay. Okay, so now we will just uh, run Python without specifying the program. And let's also not like that. And now we can like start writing here directly. Yeah, so for example, we can do in hello world and it will do the same. Uh, so for those of you who like haven't used any programming languages before, let's also quickly go through some other stuff. You can basically use this interpreter as a calculator as well. For example, what is nine plus nine? It is 18. Or you can create some variables, like you probably know variables from math. For example, x is five and we want to get x plus 9, which is 14. And you can also change this variable. So let's make it 9 now. And if we run the same thing, now it will be 18. And another thing you can do is, for example, x equals x plus 5. So our existing x and plus 5. And now we can check our x which is 14. And you can also do that uh, more easily. You have a shortcut for that, which is x plus equals 5. And this is same, this is same as this. So for some of you, this may be like too basic, but I think it it is it will be useful for people who like haven't written any code before so how are you doing we finished the first part you can exit the interpreter by calling exit function and we need braces Okay, so we can move to uh, part two, which is now working with LGSVL API. Uh, so there is a link in the document. Let's also do this. Uh, so now uh, in Python, you have, uh, so Python has a big standard library where you have like lots of uh, functionalities already written for you, which you can use. If you can, if you want to uh, add some additional stuff, uh, we have packages for that. And this LGSVL Python API is uh, a package like that, which we will now download from LGSVL GitHub, and we will use it uh, to connect, communicate with uh, LGSVL simulator. So if you have used Git before, you can uh, download it, like clone it using Git. Or if you don't have Git, you can just download it as a zip. Okay, download it already. And we can unpack it somewhere.
and we can open it in VS Code. Now open folder. Python API. <clears throat> yes, so uh, now we need to use this command to install this package. Uh, it is better to write it by hand because when you copy it, sometimes it doesn't work. And the command we use is PIP, or it is called also called PyPy, which is Python Package Manager. So PyPy install uh, to dashes user, so it, it is installed for user, and then just dot. Dot means uh, current folder, so we are installing it from current folder. And in the end it should write successfully installed LGSVL. So if anyone has any problems, uh, it's a good time to write it in the chat now. Otherwise, I will uh, continue with next steps. We can now open the interpreter again. And show comment again. Yeah, sure. And don't forget the dot in the end. So tell me when you will be ready and I'll continue. <clears throat> so, is anyone following? Uh, was there anything before this comment? Uh, no, uh, we just opened it, uh, opened the like folder, Python API. Uh, can you show us what kind of error you got? Maybe we can like, quickly, quickly correct this. Like you need to unpack this uh, this API, and uh, you should open this folder in VS Code. Okay, I will continue because uh, we don't have a lot of time. Uh, so if you weren't able to, yeah, okay, you got it. Okay, perfect. So we can continue. Now that check, let's check if it was installed co correctly. Uh, we can again open Python interpreter. Uh, and uh, let's import LGSVL. So if it was if it got installed correctly, we shouldn't get any errors at this stage. And we finished part two. Now we can go to the interesting part, uh, which is communicating with LGSVL simulator. Uh, let's open uh, 
the LGSVL simulator. This is what uh, Alexandre um, explained in the first seminar. Let's open browser. So now we need to uh, open uh, API simulation. So we have uh, one here. If you are creating a new simulation, uh, if you want to use API, you need to tick this box here. Use API to control simulation. Otherwise, you cannot uh, communicate with the simulation from API. So basically what API allows us to do is to control all of the parameters of the simulation uh, from Python via code. For example, we cannot choose map here and we cannot choose vehicles. We should load the map and we should uh, create the vehicles all from mm, the API. And we will do that now. So I'll cancel that and I will just use uh, this predefined API only simulation. So let's run it. Now we need to do this command. So we create a variable. You can name it any anything you want, but sim is, is a good name. Sim for simulation. And the simulation equals LGSVL. Is it simulator or simulation? Let's see. Yeah, simulator. So we are creating a connection to simulator. Uh, you need to specify an address. Uh, in my case, and probably in your case, you have it on the same computer. So you can just specify localhost, which means same computer. And default port is 8181. Unless you haven't changed anything, it should be the same port. And if you did everything correctly, you shouldn't get any errors at this stage. So is everyone following? Guys, I need some feedback. How how are you doing? Uh, you should you should just put uh, eight one eight one, which is the port, uh, which is port of LGSVL simulator. Yeah, uh, it is possible to change this uh, port by going into a configuration. But unless you have changed it, it's, it's just default is eight one eight one. Okay, so I, I will continue. Uh, now we can use this simulation variable that we created for uh, communicating with the simulator. Uh, it has some properties which we can uh, use to get some information from the simulator. And we can also uh, call some functions to uh, change some stuff in the simulation. Uh, so we can, for example, check current scene. Uh, what kind of error are you getting again? Okay. Uh, did you did you start the did you start the API only simulation? Module object not callable. Uh, that most likely it means that you you wrote something incorrectly. Okay, so we can, uh, for example, print the current scene. 
uh, scene is same as a map. And now we haven't chosen any map, so it should return uh, like nothing. Yeah, none. None means uh, like it is special value in Python, which means that we it is like empty. Akaki, did you manage to uh, continue, or are you still getting zero? Okay, so I will continue. Uh, we can now uh, load some scene or a map. For that, we use function sim load. And we specify a name of the scene. Uh, the name of the scene, uh, you need to find it in maps here. Uh, let's, use, let's use San Francisco. Uh, it is a, a big map. So scene equals Francisco. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. Uh, case matters in Python. So if you if you write it uh, with a different case, it may mean something else, or it may mean nothing at all. Uh, so you can also optionally specify a seed. Uh, do you remember what was seed from previous seminar? Yeah, so who, who remembers what is seed? You can write the answer in the message. So I will not use seed today. So if you did this correctly, then when you will open LGSVL simulator, uh, you should be in San Francisco. And you can like, look with the mouse. So now we have this weird view because uh, our camera is uh, following the car, but we don't have any car. So we have this uh, kind of weird view. Uh, we can now spawn our car. So for that we have yet another function, which is simulation. So our sim dot add agent, as I remember, yeah, add agent, and we should store it in some uh, variable. So this will return the agent. Uh, I don't know, let's call it car, for example. Or, yeah, actually, let's let's use the same name as it is here so you don't have any problems. Let's call it ego. So in LGSVL terms, uh, ego vehicle is the vehicle uh, which is the main vehicle that you're controlling. Uh, we also have other types of vehicles which are called NPC vehicles or non-player character vehicles. This is from like gaming term, uh, NPC. And actually we can, uh, we can open the documentation of the API. So agents. So there are three types of agents, agent type ego which is your vehicle, this autonomous vehicle, NPCs. Uh, we also have pedestrians, which are just people who walk. So you can also uh, create them uh, with the API. And yeah, we have like different types of pedestrians. Okay, so let's return. And yeah, so to create an agent, we need to specify a name of the agent. 
type of the agent and optionally a state so I will explain all of them uh, let's find uh, so which one do you want to use let's try let's try this one link call so you need to put it in quotes is a name and and LGSVL region type ego. Uh, so I will not use state for now. You can just use these two parameters. And now if you go, you can see that we created our vehicle, um, but it is uh, not a particularly good position. We created it underground. So you can actually uh, click this follow here and change the camera to free. And then you can uh, move the camera with, uh, with the keyboard. You use WASD keys for movement. And you can also go up and down with Q and E. So as you can see, we uh, respond it into an incorrect location. Okay, it's fine, but let's continue. Uh, this. Okay, so we can reset the simulation now. And this will like remove our vehicle. Let's see, yeah. And now we can spawn it in a different location. So let's look. Uh, yeah, so the state, uh, state controls exactly that. We can control uh, position and other parameters and we can check what kind of parameters we have uh, so we should first create a state so we create a variable called state which equals lgsvl agent state this agent state is a special object which describes uh, the state of the agent and if you just specify state, it will show us what the state contains. So you can see several parameters here. Uh, it has transform. Uh, transform uh, means a position and a rotation. So position, I think it's self-explanatory. It just specifies some coordinates where the car is located and rotation is like rotation in which direction it looks so this is transform we also have velocity uh, you probably remember velocity from physics so can anyone explain what velocity is you can write it in comments And we have also have angular velocity, which is velocity but for rotation. So, and each of these parameters here, it is specified as a vector. So here we have a 3D map. So in order to describe the position, we need three numbers, which are uh, like three axes. We have X, Y, and Z axis. Uh, y-axis, uh, at least in this program, it is always a horizontal axis, so like this. And we also have x-axis, like this, and y-axis, which looks like this. So basically, uh, this was the default position, so 0, 0, 0. And this is where... Uh, we previously spawned our vehicle because we used the def default position. So we can uh, 
we can change this position and uh, set it to something else. For example, we can use state. Now state contains transform. So state transform position. And we need to set it to some different position. And for that, we need to create a vector, LGSVL vector, and specify the three numbers. Uh, so I think in our case, the X and Z positions were uh, okay. It was like on the road. Uh, we just did wrong Y axis, so uh, wrong horizontal uh, position. So we can leave these two zero and we can specify uh, a different uh, y-axis so for example let's specify 15 and now again we can create our agent but now we can create it with this new state so we will also pass our state here. So you can use uh, up and down arrows for uh, like getting previous previous comments that you entered. It is a like super helpful uh, comment. The car is in the air. Okay, it seems you already did it. Yeah, it's in air. Yeah, but I think it's it's better than the previous one. Uh, and after we will run the simulation, so right now it is paused. Uh, after we will run it, it will like fall down because of gravity. So yeah, yeah, it's still better. Uh, on the next try, we will do even better. So what do we have next? Uh, give it wings and make it fly. Yeah. Okay. Let's let's actually run it so we can see it fall. Uh, yeah, actually, uh, we have this uh, nice uh, diagram here illustrating how this API works. Uh, so first, we created this connected to simulator, like this is here. So as you can see, this Python API, it communicates with simulator. It asks for connection, then it like, returns back. Then we created a vehicle and it returns back. We can also optionally create a pedestrian. We will not do it here. You can do it at home. And after that, you need to run the simulation so that uh, you can get um, some uh, results of like what it is doing. And after you run the simulation, as you can see, it doesn't immediately return back to code. Uh, but it will run the simulation for some time, and after that, it will return back to the code. So during simulation, uh, like this input here, it will be blocked, and you will not be able to do anything uh, until it finishes. So you can specify some optional time limit. For example, like run the simulation for 10 seconds, then like let me specify some something else. Or you can also not specify any time limit. And in this case, uh, you can specify uh, what should happen in case of collision. So for example, if your car will go forward and it will hit some building or another car, then it will return to your code and you can write uh, like what should happen in this case. So basically, this API allows you to create some predefined test cases, some uh, predefined behaviors for the car, uh, and you can use it to check how your uh, autonomous uh, driving software works. So like, that is like end goal uh, of this. OK, we can run the simulation now. Simulation run. And we need to specify a time limit, otherwise it will go on forever. Let's do 10 seconds. Yeah, it already fell down. 
and you can see that until it finishes you cannot do anything here okay now let's try uh, uh, try to find a better place for it uh, so actually this uh, every map has some uh, predefined locations for spawning your vehicle so it is like uh, your car, car fell below earth okay this is that is really weird uh, was it above uh, the ground or did you uh, did you spawn it underground okay yeah that that's pretty weird yeah actually to be honest I I don't know why it could have yeah but like we will reset the simulation again so you will also be able to follow resets oh that's weird well it, it looks like some bug in the software yeah let's reset it uh, did you choose the same car as us maybe you had some like incorrectly configured car which doesn't have the sensors for collision okay so we reset and now we can use uh, some predefined positions for, for spawning this vehicle at a better place and you can get these locations uh, using this command simulation get spawn get spawn so you can see that it returns uh, some locations so we have one location and we have another location and it is a list so we have several locations we can save it in a variable and now we can again create a state agent state and we can specify that uh, our transform should be same as uh, for example, let's choose the first spawn location. Spawns. And the way you specify that you want the first one is that you uh, open this, uh, these braces. I don't remember what they're called. Square, square braces, or something like that. Yeah, here here we also have a different way to do it. This this one is also correct. And let's again create our vehicle. Okay, and yeah, now we have a lot better place. It is still just a little bit mid there, but it is not a problem. It will fall down when we will start the simulation. Uh huh. Okay, we can now run it for a bit longer. Mm. 25 seconds. And you can see that uh, my control doesn't return back here, so you cannot do anything. And you can actually drive your car while the simulation is running. Let's return it back. and it finished okay so we uh, finished the third part so were you able to follow yeah please please write in the chat because otherwise uh, I don't know if you have any problems or you you did it correctly Yeah, this time it did. That's good. What about others? Is anybody else following?
Oh, well, no feedback. <laughs> ah, okay. Yeah, okay, no problem. We will also share this seminar, I think, after. after. Mm. So you can also mm, listen to the pre-recorded lecture. Yeah, okay, we can. Uh, well, uh, I think this part is the most interesting. Uh, last but not least. <laughs> So we can move to uh, the last part, which is uh, like repositioning uh, the vehicle on the fly and also uh, how to drive the vehicle, which is probably the uh, most useful part. Uh, so we will not reset it now. We will just use uh, continue from here. Yes. Uh, okay, so first um, we need to get the current state from the vehicle. So if you remember, the current state contains the position and like velocity uh, and uh, rotation of the car. So we can get it from the car. So again, um, create a variable. Yeah, just to show that you can like name it something else. We can, for example, name it current state. So current state equals uh, ego dot state. And this, what it does is it basically copies the state from ego to this variable. And we can, for example, print it. Oh, transform. Uh, the position is this, so uh, it looks like the ground is on uh, 10. And we also have a little bit of rotation uh, along x-axis. We have almost 180 rotation along y-axis, so this is, uh, like y-axis is this, and so we have like, this kind of rotation. Yeah, and we have just a little bit velocity. It, this is like really low velocity, almost zero. Uh, we can do something fun. Uh, we can... So we have a different example here, which is changing the position. So this one, it will just move it like 100 units for, forward. We can do a more interesting example, and we can uh, instead change velocity, uh, and we can change uh, y velocity, so horizontal velocity, and it will basically like jump because it will have this upwards velocity, but it will not go infinitely because the gra gravity also works here. So current state dot, and we want. Uh, velocity dot velocity and we want to change y y axis so dot y and let's set it to for example 10 and now if you go here like nothing changes uh, we need to like copy the state back into the vehicle so ego state equals current state. Now again, nothing will change here because we need to uh, run the simulation first. So I'm not sure if I did everything correctly. Let's let's see it. Simulation run, and it was time limit, right? Yeah, time limit equals ten. And let's quickly switch. Yay. It worked. Yeah, so we made it jump. So, and the final step will be to uh, drive it like you would drive the car, like uh, putting your foot on a gas pedal or 
like moving the steering wheel, which is like natural way to control this car. Uh, and uh, for that, we need to create a controller object. Uh, for that, we we'll, we use lgsvl dot vehicle control, and we need to save it into variable. Let's call it like a controller. And now on this controller, you can uh, specify throttle and steering. So throttle uh, means gas pedal. So how much you uh, put your foot on the gas pedal. And it can be uh, from zero to one. One means you push it all the way down. Zero means uh, you don't push it at all. We can choose something in between. Let's choose 0 0.5. And to make it more interesting, we can also move our steering wheel of steering. And here we have uh, numbers between zero one, minus one, and plus one. Minus one means all the way to the left. Plus one means all the way to the right. So now we don't have any uh, area on the right. So we can use the space. So what I want to do is basically uh, let it move in circles. So we need to move the steering wheel all the way to the left, which is minus one. So zero will would be in center. So tell me if it is uh, like not not clear. Okay, and now we need to apply this control to our vehicle. And we use this function. So our vehicle is called ego. Ego dot apply control. And we should specify our controller. And it also has a second parameter. Uh, second parameter controls uh, whether it should like continuously uh, do this control. So if it should have foot on the gas pedal uh, continuously, or if it should do it uh, for one frame. So if you put false here, it will just do it for one frame, like put it really quickly, and then it will be released. Uh, I'm not really sure why, uh, how you could use it, because like once you um, start the simulation, you can no longer control it. So you only get one frame. Uh, so we will use true, which means like do it for the length of the simulation. So you go apply control, and now we need to run it. Time limit, and now let's choose something bigger, like five seconds. And now if you move here, you can see that it's Basically, oh, okay, it stopped. <laughs> yeah, let's. Yeah, let's try to move it a bit longer. Yeah, so how uh, did you guys manage to follow? Yeah, cool. So as I see, only Akaki was following, but it's it's good that at least one of you was following. So you can, of course, uh, do it afterwards if you prefer. Um, we can also, uh, yeah, I will also tell you what else you can do with this API. So you can actually control lots of stuff. Uh, so we have, uh, you can create ego vehicle and control it. You can also control, uh, 
these NPC vehicles and you can make them like follow a lane. Lane is this like road lane or change some lanes, uh, stop and so on. So control the behavior in the simulation. You can also create pedestrians and uh, make them like walk randomly or follow some uh, coordinates. There is also, you can set some callbacks. So in programming terms, callback means you specify some function that, that will be performed when something happens. So in this case, you can uh, specify a callback in case of collision. So for example, when collision happens, do this, for example, like move back or something like that. And you can see all of the information here. You can also access the sensors like LiDAR, so on. You can control weather and time. Yeah, so you can do lots of stuff with it. So you will have a homework, uh, which uh, I'm not sure if uh, Alexandre already sent you. Um, I, I will. <laughs> Did we send it already? Uh, so I will join you now. <laughs> um, uh, the, with the homework, we will send later when we will also share the um, link of this report that uh, we had today, the seminar. Um, but meanwhile, Levan, if you want to give any directions about homework, um, you can share right now. And um, the homework itself will be sent um, later today with the report of lecture. <laughs> Okay, so I will also, uh, like, I want to uh, answer the questions that Akaki asked. Uh, I think it, it is a good question. Uh, so, of course, uh, it is more sensible to uh, create a Python file and write all the steps there instead of uh, writing it in interpreter. Uh, it was for, like, demonstration purposes. But, of course, uh, uh, in practice, it is more practical to uh, write it in advance, and you can uh, actually check some example uh, scripts in Quick Start folder. It it is in the Python API uh, folder that you downloaded today. And for example, like ego drive in circle, this is approximately what we did today. So if you run this, uh, it will do all the steps automatically. Now uh, for the homework, uh, what you need to do is uh, basically you need to create some kind of simulation. Uh, you, you're actually free to uh, do like what you want. Uh, you can use some pedestrians, some NPC vehicles, uh, and you need to create some, like, preferably realistic situation where some collision happens. And uh, it will be good if you use uh, some of the features here, which are, uh, like, letting the uh, NPC vehicles follow the lanes or change the lanes, for example, you could uh, create collision like that. For example, this car is moving here and another guy is changing lane and you get a collision. So that would be like uh, one of the ideas. So you can get creative with it and uh, do some interesting simulations. So does anybody have any other questions?
Yeah, so if I write code in advance, I have to do some other connections or just run the code from uh, VS. Uh, so if you see one of the examples, you can see that uh, it does the connection. So like this uh, connection stuff is also written. So you will you would just actually we can try to do it. New terminal. I should go to quick start. Like we did with hello world example. Go enter some uh, Python file. And yeah, yeah, so right now this one is also running, so it is all, all only possible to run uh, connect with one API. So this is why it doesn't work. Let's see if it's <laughs> yeah. Question will be after home. Yeah, so basically, that's how you uh, do it. You should uh, write your uh, simulations in a Python file and you can uh, send it in a Python file. How to swap. Uh, how to swap the running one with the new one. Uh, so basically, you, uh, if it is uh, like running, the simulation, if it is running, for example, you specified 35 minutes and the 35 minutes didn't finish, then you cannot like run another simulation. This one needs to finish and you need to exit if you're mm, running it in interpreter, you need to exit it. If you have it as a code, it will exit once it will reach the end. And then you can, like for example, run another one. Now, did, did I answer your question? Do you have any other questions? <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, if you want to change the scene, you just uh, do sim load and it will load a new scene. So I hope you enjoyed the seminar. I hope it was fun. Uh, and yeah, see you on the next session. Yes, and um, try to follow the record of today's seminar uh, and to follow all the steps that Levan was doing. Um, and I'm sure you will have questions, so use Telegram <laughs> chat, ask there the questions, feel free. Um, and also those um, who have uh, sent requests for having remote access to our um, computer since the third seminar, I think you will be able to have this access. Uh, since the first seminars, we are moving on uh, Linux side. Am I right, Levan? <laughs> so yeah. you will have this success. Yeah, so we will be using uh, another software, uh, Apollo, uh, which is software for autonomous vehicles. So it allows vehicles to run autonomously. And unfortunately, it is not available on Windows. So we will need to use uh, Linux. So uh, you can you can already start thinking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I think it will be good. Also, the computer that we will provide for you to run the simulations will have Linux. So to be prepared. Yeah, you could also uh, like dual boot it with Windows, so you can uh, have both operating systems uh, on one computer. Like that is also possible. So if you if you have uh, yeah, or you can install in in virtual box, but um, yeah, so we can discuss it later in Telegram. Uh, 
if you install it in virtual machine, it may have some problems with a GPU. Yeah, so we, we can continue it in Telegram. Oof. Okay, then I think we can finish. And I would like to thank all of you for today, for Friday evening. <laughs> and, um, okay, there is still some comments. <laughs> yeah, I think it will work on Kali because it is it is based on Ubuntu. Magaki, you can uh, use our computer that we will provide and do testing there. Yeah. Okay, so goodbye everyone. <laughs> Thanks for joining. Thank you and bye. Bye. <laughs>